Hello and welcome to Safe Pasture. My name is Sherry Hammers and right now we are on a, on a third part to a small mini-series and it's just an encouraging word for the, the saints of God in the times that we find ourselves in. We have been looking at Isaiah 40 and just going through the scripture. We made our way all the way to now verse 16. We talked about how God is gentle enough to carry baby lambs but he's bigger than anything that we can even comprehend. And he's more powerful than any nation or combination of na all the nations in the world. And let's look at verse 16 now. It says, And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beasts thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing in vanity. So we're talking about if we, if you could offer even a whole nation as an offering to God, he, it says he counts them as nothing and as less than nothing and vanity. Verse 18, to whom then will ye liken God or what likeness will you compare unto him? The workman melteth a graven image and the goldsmith spreadeth it over with gold and casteth silver chains. He that is so impoverished that he hath no oblation chooseth a tree that will not rot. He seeketh unto him a cunning workman to prepare a graven image that shall not be moved. Have ye not known? Have ye not heard? Hath it not been told to you from the beginning? Have ye not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he, God, that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof, are as grasshoppers that stretcheth, stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in that bringeth the princes to nothing he maketh the judges of the earth as a vanity let me just back up here you know verse 16 or verse 18 god's asking the question who will you liken unto god and then he starts talking about people that make their own idols they make a graven image. They make golden idols or, and put silver chains on them. And he says, you know, he, the guy goes out and he, he goes and finds a tree that won't rot so it'll last a while. And then he, he finds a skilled workman to engrave the image on it and to make it so it won't topple over. And, and God's like, haven't you, where have you been? How come you don't know this? How come, how come you don't understand this from the very foundation of the earth? That it's God. It's not a graven image. It's not something you can go chop out of the woods and bring home and chisel it down into an idol. And lest we think, well, at least I'm not doing that. No, our idols are actually more deceptive. And they, they fly under the radar because our idols are in the heart. And our idols are things that have a place in our heart before God. They, they are first place instead of God. They have priority over God. So let's just keep that in mind as we read about what uh, God instructed Isaiah to say. So he says here in verse 24, <clears throat> Yea, they shall not be planted. Yea, they shall not be sown. Yea, their stalks shall not take root in the earth. And he shall also blow upon them, and they shall wither, and the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble. To whom then will ye liken me, or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who hath created these things, that bringeth out their host by number, in the stars? He calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one faileth. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel? My way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God. So, so what God is saying is, okay, you, y'all, you should know me. Who are you? What is like me? You can't make an idol that's even comes close to being who I am. And He says, you know, let's let's look at things here. Let's look up. Let's look at the stars. Where, who do you think made those? He made them and he knows them by name. And he's strong in power. And not one of these stars fails. And then he says, 
Jacob and Israel, he's saying, my people are saying, oh, God doesn't see me. God doesn't, you know, he's not, he's not paying attention. And then God says in verse 28, hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. I know that last verse is very familiar to a lot of us. But I want to bring it into context as we go back and we look at, at verse 28. He's again saying, you know, you don't know. I'm the creator. I am the God from everlasting. I'm not weary. And there's no end to my understanding. So God is saying, I've been paying attention. I don't fall asleep. I don't get tired. I have heard you. And he says, if you would look to me, then I would give, in verse 29, I would give power to the faint. Are you about to faint? Are you worn out? You know, the Bible talks about in, in these last days that the devil will try to, he, he's, one of his jobs is to um, wear out the saints. But God says he gives power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases your strength. And he said even young people, you know, young people that seem to have an abundance of energy. It says they faint and they're weary and the young men utterly fall. And then he contrasts that with verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And we're not just talking about waiting like watching the clock. We're talking about more like serving as you wait upon the Lord, you know, when you go to a restaurant and you have a waiter or a waitress and they're waiting on you, they're serving you, they're attending to your needs. Well, when we wait upon the Lord, when we're attending to what he wants, to what he needs from us in obedience, it says that he shall renew their strength and they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I remember reading this verse uh, and the explanation, the, the picture, word picture I got has never left me. Mounting up with wings as eagles. When eagles mount up uh, on, on the wind, they actually, they're mounting up closer to not only above the storm, like a lot of people talk about, but they actually uh, um, get closer to the sun. They're, they're, they're raising their perspective they're getting above this earth and they're mounting up close to the sun. We, so we mount up close to God as an eagle mounts up closer to the sun. And it says those people that do that, they shall run and not be weary. Can you imagine that? I mean, these verses sometimes, they, they seem so second nature, almost cliche because we hear them, some of these verses so many times. But can you imagine, I, I've run, in my younger days, I would run 5Ks and 10Ks, but I've never run and not been weary. I mean, there is a point, you, you're, this is a finite body in a sin-cursed world, and, and we run and we're weary, but with God's supernatural strength, it says we can run. What are we, where are we running? We're running this race that Paul talked about. We're running the race of our life. For the prize of the high calling, of the, the mark of the high calling, I always get it mixed up, sorry, but maybe we can put that scripture up there, but the prize of the high calling in Christ. We're running this race, and God's saying we can run it in a way where we're not weary, not even in these days where we're finding ourselves in, these trying days. God says you can run and not be weary. You can walk and not faint. Where are we walking? We're walking the walk of faith. We're running the race of faith, and we want to end well. We want to come to come to Jesus in that day where he says, well done, good and faithful servant. He wants us to look to him for strength. He wants us to rely on him. And if that's not enough, just think about this. 
you wouldn't be able to take your next breath without him. You wouldn't, your heart would not beat another time without him. Why not just go ahead and give him the rest? Give him the rest of your, of your life. Give him everything else that concerns you. He wants you to. He says in uh, 1 Peter 5, I believe it says, you cast your care upon the Lord because he cares for you. And that's the encouragement I, I'm trying to convey to you today. God knows exactly what's going on. He knows what's happening on the world scene. He knows what's happening in your life. He's numbered the hairs on your head. He's very in tune with what's going on. But he needs you to draw nigh to him. And then he'll draw nigh to you. Thank you for joining me. And there will be another video in this series because I have another related chapter of scripture that I want to bring to the table. So please tune in next time. God bless.